Happy Monday. Welcome back to the show. This is episode 91. And I actually, this episode was going to be about how you extend general generational wealth to your children with your birth plan. But I started answering a question from a listener and I got a little heated and carried away. So the question from the listener is today's episode. And it's it's my advice and kind of some steps and some resources on what to do if your partner is not on board with your birth plan. So let's jump right into that. Welcome back to Unapologetically Unmedicated, where we are fiercely taking control of our birth and so in turn taking control of our motherhood. And we're getting informed on our own terms because we absolutely do not subscribe to the status quo. I'm Fierce Lizzie, your birth bestie, and I'm cheering you on and I'm helping you have your best birth experience where you are the boss. This is not your typical childbirth education, and here on the show, we focus on the physiologic and undisturbed process of birth. We're unapologetically for unmedicated. We trust our intuitions more than the evidence, and we know our birth rights. Let's jump right into today's episode. All right, let's talk about what what you can do if your partner isn't supportive of your birth plan. And now this can vary a little bit, right? I got a question from a listener actually, and I wish I had a little more detail, but we're just going to go off of what she gave me. So here's what she sent in. How do you get a huge epidural fan? A hundred percent against home birth. And that's in quotes. Um, so I assume this is exactly what her, uh, spouse said, how do you get a huge epidural fan, hundred percent against home birth spouse on board with a hospital home birth? I want a home birth bad, but well, I will never convince him and he's pushing the epidural. So obviously there's like a <laughs> hundred questions I want to ask this mom. And just to clarify real quick, she did say, um, I want how do I get him on board with a hospital home birth? And that's the wording that I always use on the podcast is I help you to have a home birth style hospital birth. So she's asking me, she's, it sounds like she's given up on the home birth route because she doesn't have the support from her spouse. And she's asking, how do I get him to be supportive of the birth that I want in the hospital. And I actually have a, an episode called four ways to prepare your partner for birth. And it's episode 28. You can go back and listen to it, but it kind of assumes that your partner wants to support you. Okay. This is the biggest hurdle here. I feel like for this mom. So if that's you, if your husband's ready to support you, if your partner's ready to support you and you just need some help, on how to get your partner to be your best support person in birth, start with episode 28. And also know that the final module inside of Unmedicated Academy is actually for you and your partner to do together. Some Academy moms do the whole course with their partners. My husband would not sit through a whole birth course. So the way I structured the course is that the last module, you and your partner, whoever that is, whoever your support person is, maybe your support person is going to be your mom or your sister or your aunt or your best friend, you and whoever's going to be in that birth space with you are going to do that final module together. And it actually prompts you to go back to some of the important lessons inside the previous module. So it's really focusing on getting just what that partner needs to be your number one support person during your birth, because we're, we're done the whole clueless dad in the birth space. It's like funny in the movies, but it's not funny in real life. It's actually beneficial to everyone for your partner to be just as prepared as you. One Academy mom reached out to me and she told me, The minute I started feeling contractions, I got so scared. I had all of this knowledge 
But now that it was happening, my brain had completely shut down. Thank goodness for your module with partner support. My partner instantly knew what to do and guided me the entire time. This is so common. When contractions start to get distracting and unmanageable, our logical brain turns off. You just did a whole birth course with your logical brain and then your logical brain turns off. So you really need the right reminders and you need your partner to know what to do to walk you through the rest of labor. That's exactly what we cover inside of Unmedicated Academy in that partner module. So that's what we want from our partners, right? We want that our partner, especially if we don't have a doula, we want our partner to basically be our doula. So if you're ready to get informed and empowered and you want to take control of your birth, let's work together. Enrollment is open now. And if you're around 20 weeks, it's a perfect time to join. One more thing about the Academy before I jump back into our listener question. There's a new perk for moms due in 2024. When you enroll, you are also getting complimentary Nora so that you can truly go all in and start preparing your body, your mind, your birth education for the birth that you want. Okay, so back to if your partner's not on board with your birth plan, or even if he is, even if he is on board, okay, he's a man, assuming, (laughs) he's never seen birth, assuming, okay, Um, he's not an expert, okay? The first thing that your partner really needs to understand is why you want an unmedicated birth. And the easiest way to do that is by getting him a little bit informed on kind of what you're going up against in the hospital. And this is important if you're birthing in the hospital, but it's also important if you are trying to get your partner to understand why you maybe want an out of hospital birth. So the first thing that I always recommend, and this is actually the the first thing I recommend in that episode 28, is to watch the business of being born. So it's a great documentary. It talks about how birth is a business. You'll have to rent it. Um, You can rent it on Amazon Prime. I would start there. Okay. Now I have a few other options. There is also a free documentary on Prime. And it's, um, it's, you can find it on Prime, but it's, on free V. So there's ads and I actually haven't watched it yet, but I stumbled across it just this morning because I wanted to be sure that the business of being born was still on prime. And this one came up and it's called pregnant in America. And within the first five minutes, the husband, and I think it's from the husband's point of view. So the husband is documenting his wife's pregnancy and he has some experts on there. And in the first five minutes, the husband says, It doesn't seem like the hospital is the safest place to give birth. And as a husband, it's my job to protect my wife. And this is absolutely how our husband's brains work. They want to protect us, which is why often they want you to birth in the hospital because they feel like you will be protected there. So it just sometimes takes that little bit of shift in being informed and really understanding all of the options to get your partner on board with your birth plan. So those are two options of documentaries. Watch the free one, rent the business of being born. It's like 15 bucks to rent. Or if your partner is more likely to listen to a podcast, Dr. Stu, I know we just talked about Dr. Stu last week, but he did an episode on the spillover with Alex Clark. And he explains he's going to explain exactly why you are hesitant to have a medicalized hospital birth. Okay. He lays it out just very bluntly. And I feel like, okay, I don't know if your husband is like this, but my husband is like this. I'll be like, Oh, you know, deodorant that's toxic deodorant old spice. It's toxic. He's like, yeah, okay. And then Joe Rogan says it. And then he's like, did you know that I should be doing this other deodorant because this is bad for my testosterone or something like that. I don't know, but my husband comes, comes back with things that Joe Rogan said. And I'm like, I told you that already. (laughs) And I know this is not, I know this is a common thing. So if he's more likely to listen to a podcast, um, Oh, this is what I was getting to having him hear it from a man. That's not you. Okay. So this is why we're, we're, 
we love Dr. Stu, right? Cause he's a man, he's an O, he was previously a certified, you know, OBGYN. So that episode on the spillover, it's very long, but it's very good. And it's going to, it's just, it just says everything that you need to say, but you don't have to say it. He can just listen to that podcast episode. And then even easier, Dr. Stu did another uh, set, like a segment on the daily show. It's a little shorter. It's not podcast, but uh, it, you can get it on YouTube. It's a little more mainstream than Alex Clark on the spillover. And you can, you can, you can grab it on YouTube. I'm going to link to all of these, all four in the show notes so that if, if you're listening to this, because you're like, yeah, I need to get my husband informed. I need him to get him on the same page. There's your four things to start with. I actually want to take a step back and this is going to be a little controversial, but oh well, <laughs> if my partner told me that he wouldn't support any, any part of my birth plan, or he disagreed with, with any piece of my birth plan, and he wasn't willing to hear me out, he wasn't willing to watch those episodes, he wasn't willing to um, n- hear my side of the story, and he was just adamant on, no, I don't want to do that, he would be a dead man. I am not, I mean, I'm joking, but there's just no way I would let a man choose my birth plan. (laughs) There's just absolutely no way. And really like, what does your male partner know about birth? Why are they assuming that you don't know more than them? This is the, this is the part that baffles me because if I'm coming to my husband with, with anything female related, he knows that I know more than him in that arena. And any man that doesn't, I, dead man, I'm telling you. But this is actually so, so common. Um, a very common reason that moms who want home births, they end up not choosing home birth. And they're, they're, the reason that they often share, and this could be just one of other, you know, one of many reasons, but a lot of women will say, uh, I, you know, I, I wanted a home birth, but I'm having a hospital birth because my, my husband isn't comfortable with having a home birth. And I just think that <laughs> again, I, I just cannot see that, uh, because you're the one giving birth. Like you, Your husband's not doing anything. Um, your husband's not physically doing anything. So for him to be swaying the decision is just mind, mind boggling to me. And I, I understand the argument of like, okay, well, it's his baby too. Okay, I get that. I get he is equally a parent to this child. But if he doesn't understand the risks, the benefits, all of the options, he is not making an informed choice. His vote should get vetoed. (laughs) I'm so sorry. There's no way I would go against what I know being informed. And this extends to, you know, we're talking about having a home birth, right? Versus having a hospital birth. And I know that's a little harder because you really do need to have your partner's buy-in often because home births are expensive and, and they're coming to your home. (laughs) Like that's a little trickier, um, of a buy-in, but we're going to get back to this, this question too, where the husband is not like wants her to even get an epidural. Okay. So we're going to get to that in a second, but this, the controversial part that I'm saying here is that you have the right to veto your husband's uninformed vote as the mother of your child. And this extends you know, from your birth options, it extends to vaccinating your child, to circumcising your child. I 100% believe that like our primary primary role as a mother is to keep our children safe. There's no way I'm letting anyone, not even their father, get in the way of that. I am so confident in my decisions that I won't even let the father of my children swayed me from those decisions. And I think if, if you're not, if you, this is a way that you flex your authority muscle 
over your your body and your and your baby because again going back to birth it's not just your baby it's you it's your body you're experiencing birth you're going to have the physical trauma from a hospital birth from a medicalized birth your husband's not okay okay so i know i'm also kind of getting like i'm sounding a little bit of like all home birth or bust on you right i promise that is not me I totally understand like not being able to have a home birth, but if it's just purely a lack of knowledge around home birth, that's the only thing holding you back from having the home birth that you want. And it comes down just to getting him educated. Like he doesn't know anything. (laughs) That's where these documentaries make it really easy. If, if now, if he's completely closed minded and as, as soon as that husband says like, the hospital isn't safe, right? Or as soon as Dr. Stu says, um, mammals don't need Pitocin or whatever he says in his, his thing. And, and the, the unsupportive partner like turns it off, calls them a kook, like, sorry, that guy's gotta go. He would not be allowed in my birth. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like a partner that's not not going to support you in what you want is not even going to meet you in the middle and listen to why you're choosing the things you you're choosing. If your partner's not going to trust you to be the intuitive decision maker in your birth, he's not going to support you in your birth and, and he shouldn't be allowed there. Now, I also don't want you to birth alone, right? But I just want to put that out there that you don't have to have your husband at your birth. If your husband is not supportive, you absolutely don't have to have him at your birth. Um, And there's probably a lot of other things you (laughs) you need to work on in your marriage. But let's go back to this specific question. So what can she do? And again, I I don't have the details around this question. I don't know if like why the husband is saying this, if he's open to conversation about it, I don't know. But of course, step one is what I've been saying over and over again is to get him informed. Let him know that you will be avoiding the epidural. And if he can't support that, then he's not allowed in the birth space. Simple as that. And, you know, it also sounds like, obviously the home birth is off the table. That's what it sounds like. If you're birthing in the hospital and you can have a doula, Think about getting a doula because even if you allow your partner there, they will only be pushing the epidural as support. As soon as things get hard, you're not going to have the support from your partner. Your partner is going to be the only support he knows is the epidural. (laughs) And so, and that's often what happens in the hospital. So really getting that support so that, you just deserve support. (laughs) You deserve support in your birth. The hospital is already a place that is against your birth plan. So to have another person in the room, the, the one other person in the room that is supposed to be your teammate is also against your birth plan. That's not going to work. So you need someone else in the room or you need him out of the room. And it all starts with, you know, having that conversation and getting him informed and seeing where that leads to. Okay, that was actually going to be just a question before an episode. But since I rambled on and on (laughs) for 17 minutes to be exact, we're just going to leave this off its own little episode. If you want to leave me a question or you want to share a testimonial um, for me to share on the show, you can send me a voice message at fiercelizzie.com slash VM, VM for voice message, or you can just scroll down and click on the link in the show notes. I appreciate you so much for being here with me today on the podcast. If you found this episode helpful at all, the best way to show your support is to take a screenshot and share it to your socials. Be sure to tag me because I would love to see what you thought of this episode, or you can simply forward the episode to a mom friend, to someone who's planning for their birth, to someone who is trying to conceive This is how we get more mothers informed. And if you have a second to leave a rating and review on whatever platform you're tuning in on, that is beyond helpful to get these shows out to more mamas. I'll be back soon with another episode, or you can follow along with me daily over at Fierce Lizzie on Instagram. Stay fierce, moms.